we're going to have a second look at the 22 pellets driven by 22 caliber nail gun blanks. You got a freaking drone? Are you kidding me? In our first test, we took 22 caliber 14 grain pellets and drove them with these industrial powder actuated charges. We were able to push these pellets over 2,800 feet per second. In our first test this time, we're going to look at loading the pellet backwards. In the pellet gun community, there seems to be kind of a myth that shooting pellets backwards is somehow better. So we're going to try that and see how it works against a piece of bulletproof Kevlar. Okay, uh, <laughs> 3,000 foot per second or so, <laughs> maybe, pellet, 14 grain pellet versus body armor, whenever you're ready. Nice shot. We're going to shoot a CCI Stanger. I think the velocity is like 1,600 feet per second, something like that. You know what it is. At the Kevlar behind, that's covering the DBW. Whenever you're ready. Big difference. You can clearly yeah. see how the Stinger had a lot more energy. Both rounds left a pretty good size mark on the melon, even though the Kevlar did stop both rounds. You can see the pellet did go a lot faster than the CCI Stinger in this side-by-side -side comparison. Next, we wanted to see how the pellets would work against a water-filled container. Woo! In our first video, we had a lot of uh, very good results and a lot of viewers had a lot of questions and what ifs and suggestions, so that's why we made this second video. We were hoping to find some kind of remnants of the pellet, um, but apparently it just disintegrated. We searched all over the place and couldn't find any pieces of it. Many viewers said, hey, you need to glue the pellets onto the blank, so let's try that, see how that works. Then we even loaded it into this 1022 magazine. Now it does seem logical to do this instead of uh, muzzle loading them like we did in the first video. Now besides not chambering, there were just other issues involved with loading the pellets this way. Let's try the next one. Oh, same no, thing. Didn't work. See? Oh, you got it. Okay, let her let her fly. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, pre-loaded uh, pellet onto you know super glued onto the crimp of the blank. Whenever you're ready. I don't think he ejected. No. Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, that one, they, there's something stuck in it. Really stuck. Hey. Yeah, brasses. We had these uh, same results each time we shot them on both rifles. And the problem is the pellet is going from the chamber into the rifling of the barrel, and the pellet's just not strong enough and not the proper shape to handle that transition. So it just shreds the skirt off, leaving behind these rings of lead from the pellet. So that's why we had good luck muzzle loading the pellets so that they were already in the rifling. In my first video, I put out the word, hey, if any channel wants to chronograph this, wants to have the guts to try this with their own 22, please do. Only one channel stepped forward, and that was Rye on Ham. I'll put the link to his very informative video at the end of my video. He used an Allen wrench to seat the pellet into the rifling first and had pretty good results doing it that way. I then loaded a blank into the magazine of the 1022 and had good luck feeding that right into the chamber. So the question we wanted to find out this time was how accurate the pellets were at further distances than we shot before. Just to make sure the gun sight in, he's gonna shoot the plate uh, with some normal uh, Winchester 22 long rifle. Go ahead. Uh, 
okay now we'll see if these pellets have any accuracy beyond you know 30 10 yards or whatever we were shooting last time and we'll be shooting about 50 or 60 yards at a metal plate on the ditch bank over there yellow plate okay whenever you're ready Darren oh way off it was low that was better but they're so inconsistent yeah it's all over the place oh. we're not even bother doing the hundred yard test yeah because we'll never hit it we, we haven't hit this little plate and it's about eight by it's about the size of a sheet of paper yeah i guess we have to conclude that this whole concept was somewhat of a novelty they're a lot of fun up close they have a tremendous amount of power they'll punch through much thicker metal plate than normal 22s but there's a lot of downside to these things they're kind of slow to load they lead foul the barrel like crazy but the biggest thing is they're just not very accurate at further ranges so they're useless as some kind of a varmint round be sure to check out rye on ham's video and check out his chronograph testing and he did a bunch of other testing too and get another person's opinion on this before you try it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.